So as we go here, there are two things that I'm doing. One thing that I'm doing is I'm doing what is typical for a normal class, which is providing you with information, right? That hopefully you can apply and benefit from having the knowledge and then try to apply what I say. Then there's another thing that I'm doing. And the other thing that I'm doing is trying to talk to something deeper inside of you, trying to talk to your heart so that your heart will firstly sense the urgency and the necessity to practice. Secondly, it will start to have a willingness to let you practice so that it'll come up with less excuses or less busyness in the way. And then thirdly, I'm trying to sort of send messages heart to heart that help you help your heart or something deeper inside you to start practicing on its own without e even your consent. So of course your consent is there because you joined the class. What I mean by without your consent is you don't have to intellectually or conceptually say, okay, I'm gonna start practicing now. But your heart will start practicing all on its own based on some of the things that I'm saying and transmitting. So for example, a simple example, it works on this level and a deeper level than this, but here's a simple example. When I say to you that you notice, can you notice that when you're in the shower, for example, that sometimes you've picked up the soap, you've moved the soap along, you've washed your hair, you've done all kinds of these things, and then you wake up and realize, did I, did I wash my feet yet? Did I pick up the soap yet? Did I wash my body yet? Did I shampoo yet? Right, and then you have to think and like, okay, I think I remember a moment going like this. Okay, yeah, I, I shampooed, right? Or you have to try to think, you know, did I, did I wash my legs? Did I get to my legs, right? And, and part of the reason this happens is because we, we lack awareness, right? We're busy thinking about something else and we're not present in the shower. And so we, we have gaps in our knowledge of what's actually going on because our mind has drifted away or gotten involved, whether it be actively thinking or just passively daydreaming. And we've left what we're actually doing, what actually is real right here and now. We've left it. And so notice that when you're in the shower that there's these gaps in awareness. And then you'll know that, oh, it was just your sense Oh, I was just busy thinking or dreaming about something and didn't know what I was, what, that I was here doing this. I, I lacked awareness. And you'll get a sense of what awareness is and what awareness isn't. Okay, so, so for example, that teaching right there, you may pick that up intellectually and go, nah, I'm kind of aware in the shower. I, I know when I wash my hair. Or you might say, yeah, he's right. You know, either one, doesn't matter which one you say, right? So, so that's just on the intellectual level. But then what's gonna happen is over the next week, when you go into the shower at least once, maybe every single time, hopefully you shower more than once, that would be helpful for this exercise among other things. That when you do, you're going to wake up to this fact. Now, whether I've, taught it to you before in other classes, or this is your first time hearing it, it will allow this experience to happen more uh, readily and more obviously, just by bringing that teaching to your attention and bringing it to your attention on a couple of different levels, on the level of someone who practices this and is speaking from a place of that uh, awareness that happens during the speaking from these ex, this experience right so what's going to happen is you have an intellectual knowledge in it but there's something percolating at a deeper level and so the teachings are coming from from me or through me to you from from experience 
and being transmitted to you and to your heart and deeper to you. If you're willing to uh, listen and practice as you listen. If your heart is just open to, to learning and growing and seeing more truth, then I'm able to provide these tidbits, these teachings, and they're going to actualize for you without you even trying for it to happen. It's one of the benefits of, it's one of the important parts of learning Dhamma, uh, learning about these things from somebody who has the experience, right? Is that it's going to transmit into uh, spontaneous moments of, of awareness in your life just based on simple teachings like that and, and many others. So there's a couple of levels that's going on. So you can listen to what I say and okay, yeah. You might notice when your head goes up and your eyes go to the side, that it's likely that you've gone into trying to understand intellectually or mentally uh, what I'm talking about. And that's, that's fine on a certain level, you know, try to notice that, don't, don't fight it, right? But notice when that happens. That's not where the learning is actually taking place. That's not on a deeper level, what I'm trying to teach. I'm not trying to give you a whole bunch of information so that you can tell your friends about it or write it down and say, oh, this is great stuff or whatever. Of course, tell your friends about it, please. I'd love to, to, to teach them too. But what I wanna do is uh, connect on a deeper level so that the practice becomes less of something to think about and what about this and what about that, I can, I can, I can answer some of those questions, but ultimately the, all those, the pieces of the puzzle and the questions are gonna be answered through your own practice. They're seeing the truth for yourself. So you, you take what I say only at a certain level provisionally, and then you try it out. And what'll happen is in your heart and in your experience will arise some of the things that I say uh, based on these special times that we have together. So no one can practice one of the things about Dhamma or learning uh, mindfulness that's this in this powerful way, mindfulness for insight, is that, or Vipassana, I think I used that word last class, so I'm sure you're all up to date. So the thing about practicing Vipassana is that we are going to have these experiences happen for us in our daily lives that I'm uh, directing us to when our heart is open to, to the teachings. And then we just practice what I ask you to uh, without questioning too much, wondering too much, worrying about it too much. We're not able to figure this stuff out by ourselves. So this isn't something that you can go, well, okay, he says this, I'm gonna combine it with that and that, and I'm gonna come up with the best potion that, that works, right? We're not our own experts on this practice. This is the type of practice where you have to trust your teacher if you're willing to uh, sign up and, and be with a the teacher. Then you have to trust your teacher and just practice what your teacher asks you to. So in a sense, it's, it's a little bit like, um, like a martial art where you've signed up for a particular uh, martial art and the teacher understands this practice and you, your understanding is limited. And then what you do is uh, practice the way that the teacher has asked you to until uh, you become an expert yourself. So with that type of humility, you can go very, very far. And I have a lot of examples of not just my teacher's students, but my students, uh, some of the students with the most humility that just do what I ask have, have achieved the greatest results. Those that uh, practice a little bit and then, oh, but that's a cool practice too. And this is a cool practice too. And then just wanna try a whole bunch of things. It sounds all kinds of fun. Uh, don't don't get very far. Right? 
And how do you know? How do you know? This is a good question that just came to me. How do you know if you get far in this practice? How do you, how do you know? You'll know when uh, times are difficult. That's when you'll really know. I mean, you'll know sporadically through having things like frustration and anger and these things coming up and that they pass very quickly, much quicker than they used to. And that's going to be amazing, right? revolutionary, really. But after, if you've been practicing for a while, if you've been practicing for long enough, when things get really difficult in our surroundings, but we find that our suffering during those situations is far less and far shorter, where we might have been stressed for weeks, we might be stressed for a day, for example. That it, and the severity of the stress or the severity of the pain or the sadness, whatever the issue might be that happened in our life or in our family will, will be less severe. And it, it won't hurt, it won't dig in quite as much and it won't last as long. And so as you continue to practice this, the possibility, if, if you just stick to the, the practice and, um, and not try a whole bunch of different things, then, and you follow the directions, which isn't easy to do because it's, it, well, it's not complicated. It's just, it's sometimes so simple that we try something more difficult than necessary. But if we stick to the teachings, we practice correctly, then you'll find that suffering will be much shorter, uh, less severe, when it happens and if you you can really see if you've made progress after practicing for let's say i don't know a year or two or six months if you've been really on it really practicing seriously but when things are difficult going difficultly in our lives and uh and you find that the the pain of it of what's going on the pain in our heart with regards to what's happening around us and in our lives significantly decreases and especially is, is much, much shorter and fewer and far further between. And that's when you really know. But there are many steps on the way to that that know you're going in the right direction, right? And a lot of it is spontaneous moments of awakening, a spontaneous moments of awareness, spontaneous moments of the, if we have any, feeling in our heart that is an uncomfortable or a painful one that it dissipates quite quickly and spontaneous moments of that all right so today my promise was to talk about mindfulness of the heart last class we talked about two different types of meditation, right? And the two different types of meditation were, one was, we were calling it samatha, which was for calmness and a rest, right? And the other kind was preparatory work, preparing for vipassana, which was awareness type meditation okay. and we needed a different approach for each once we have a little bit of a handle on the practice of meditation and we've been practicing both of these especially the awareness type right then we have enough of a foundation that if we start to practice mindfulness in our daily life, it's going to be quite effective. So let's talk about mindfulness of the heart, because that is really is the essence or the heart, I guess, of the practice is mindfulness of our of our own heart. Sometimes we have to do other practices like calmness and relaxation practice, or like paying attention to awareness of our body, which I'm going to 
teach next week, which is actually a very interesting topic, much different than you might think it is. The mindfulness of the heart is, is the essence of the practice. And often we have to do other practices so that we can get to mindfulness of the heart because it isn't always immediately available, that practice for us. So sometimes we need to do some of these other practices so that we can get there. Sometimes we can be aware or have mindfulness of the heart directly. Sometimes we can't, and when we can't, we need some of these other practices uh, to help us get there. But this is really the, the essence of what we're going to be doing. It's the heart of the course and the heart of the practice. And it's, it's really, really, really easy. It's just that we didn't know that it was useful to do this. It's something that we neglect to do because we, we were never taught to do it and we didn't know how valuable it was. But it's really, really easy. In fact, children can do it very readily. In fact, sometimes children can do it more easily than us because we're, we're pretty complicated creatures as adults. So can we all right now detect in ourselves very, very simply how we're feeling right now? And we all detect at least one or two things. Okay, first of all, can we get a sense if we're feeling happy, unhappy, or just neutral? Can we all have a sense of that? It's not, it's, not, it's not always readily available for everyone, but that should be simple enough for most of us. Just listening to me talking over the next 15 minutes has, has calmed a lot of us down from our day already, right? So, so it might be readily available. Can we, can we all sense that? Everybody sense how you're feeling? Can you sense if you're feeling happy, unhappy? Great, good. Can we just sense that if you're feeling unhappy, happy, or neutral? So now the ability to do that is so unbelievably important, but so unbelievably overlooked. Like to just be able to sense if you're feeling happy, unhappy, or neutral, in any given moment is the start of a beautiful mindfulness practice to be able to see what's actually there in the heart at any given moment. The trick though, is it this simple? Kind of. The trick is to be able to see how we're feeling when we're just going through our daily activities. So not just in the meditation class when I ask you or direct you to, to see it, but actually to monitor, in a sense, how you're feeling throughout the day. And especially after different things happen in the day, right? So for example, you wake up in the morning and then you start thinking about oh, I have to do this or do that. And then you feel unhappy. Right? And then to be able to sense that you can detect that there's unhappiness in the heart. To be able to remember to do that or take that one second to do that. Right? That's the hard part. The actually knowing if you feel unhappy, not, not so difficult. Right? And then you might think, oh no, wait a minute. Wait a minute, no, all that stuff I had to do I was just unhappy about, that's tomorrow. Today I'm totally free, right? And then, hey, and then there's this happy, free feeling, right? We all like feeling free of responsibilities. It's amazing we take so many on, to be honest. <laughs> um, but we, you know, ah, okay, today I just can relax, right? And then what happens? The heart opens up, we feel happy. The only job with our mindfulness practice for that moment is to be able to sense that the heart just got happy. Right? And we can all do that, I think, right? Do we all know what it feels like to feel happy? Right? We all know what that feels like, right? We all have to know what that feels like, right? Yeah, good. 